Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello dear friends. May God bless you all and may he bless you abundantly. May the Holy Spirit come to meet every one of your needs. But above all, may He instruct each of us in the way we should follow, or rather, in the decisions that we have to make. Because when a person is guided by the Holy Spirit, there is no bad luck, there is no destiny, there is no witchcraft, there is no curse, there is no hell, no demons, there is nothing in this world that will prevent them from experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promised. Jesus promised life with abundance starting within us from the moment that our mind, our spirit, our intellect, our intelligence accept His Word as the instrument of life, as a guide for our lives. When we hear the Word of God, and we submit ourselves to it, then it's impossible for things to go wrong. It's impossible for a person to be worried, anxious. It's impossible for a person to be depressed. It's impossible. Why? Because the Word of God is the mind of God. It is the Spirit of God. The thoughts of God inside of us. Have you imagined that? Think with me. Let's think just a bit. Just a bit. It doesn't cost anything. Pay attention. People think that God is a magician. Oh, I ask this and that. They ask a lot of things. I want this, I want the other. They have a long list of requests to ask God for. Okay? It's what they need, it's what they want, etc., etc. However, God sent His Word, and His Word is to guide those who reason. It's to guide, to lead, to conduct. It's to base the life of each and every one of us upon. When we obey this word, there's no way it can go wrong because it's the word of God. His word is perfect. He himself said, the word that proceed from my mouth shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish as I please, as I want. So, when a person submits themselves to the Word of God, that's what it means to enter the Kingdom of God. Do you remember that Jesus said, Seek first the Kingdom of God and His righteousness, meaning, seek first to obey the rules of God's kingdom, to do the will of God and His righteousness. When we do so, it's impossible for a person to live a mediocre, miserable, horrible life as most people in this world live. It's impossible because God is forced, He is obliged by His own word. This is it. When 
a person pledges the word. For example, I will speak of myself. When I pledge my word, you can count on it because I will fulfill it. Unless something happens, a tragedy happens along the way and I am unable to fulfill my word. Otherwise, I will fulfill my word because I honor, I value the word that I pledge. I'm not perfect, not at all, I'm not perfect. However, despite of my imperfections, I also have virtues, right? Everyone has their virtues and I got this from my father. My father was like this, he was a man of his word, a man of his word. He was very disciplined and harsh in correcting his children, but he was a man of word. And he used to tell me, I forgive, I forgive a thief, but I don't forgive a liar. He used to say these things. I wouldn't agree. I mean, I still don't. But the fact is that when we give our word, you who are watching me right now, you who are a person of integrity, blameless, and you have a good character, then you like to fulfill your word, don't you? Why do you sometimes go to bed worried about the debts you have to pay? Because you have a good character. Because if you didn't have a good character, you wouldn't even care. You'd go to bed and sleep as usual. But if you are a person of character, you want to honor your commitments. There's no doubt about that, right? So God, he gave his word. Do you think that he will fail in what he said? Do you think that? So this is why he gives us the word in order for his word to guide us, to lead us, to conduct our minds, to teach us to make the right choices. And the truth, the truth is that he, in his word, said the following. Pay attention, look, he said, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Meaning, God established, he gave his word, he gave the right direction. But he also determined, established a law, a natural law of life, that everything that we sow, we shall also reap. It's a given. Even if it's raining cats and dogs outside, it will happen. You can be certain of that. Look at what the Holy Text says. God, through his servants, said like this, Evil, evil pursues sinners, the wicked ones. Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Good shall be repaid. Who are the righteous ones? No one in this world is righteous. But when you present your faith in the word of God, and you apply that word in your life, in your behavior, in your character, then the word itself guarantees you that you will succeed. Because it's the word of God, it's not the word of man, it's not philosophy. The word of God, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall by no means pass away. And he said more, my words I spirit and life. So we have from God His own word that promises blessings upon blessings. But we also have His word that teaches. Listen, pay attention. 
You will reap whatever you sow. If you sow what is good, you will harvest what is good. I guarantee you this. But if you sow what is bad, you will harvest what is bad. It doesn't matter the reason why you sowed that seed. What matters is the following. If you sowed what is evil, you're going to reap it. And there's more. Those people or everyone who says like this, I don't understand God. I don't understand God because I see the wicked ones succeeding and the good ones are being harmed. That's what goes on in the mind of this unbelieving world. But the unbelieving world doesn't know the word of God. And God, in his word, says, he guarantees that the wicked have no peace. There is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for those who are evil. The evil ones live tormented day and night. Their conscience is constantly heavy. So the majority of people who suffer, they suffer. The majority of people who suffer, they do so because they've sown what is evil and they are reaping what is evil. Of course. Of course. There's no doubt about that. If you made a poor choice for your finances, you're going to be frustrated. Isn't it true? If you made a poor choice concerning your marriage, you are going to be unhappy. If you made a poor choice, for example, concerning what you eat, you are going to feel unwell. Your stomach will hurt. Your head will hurt. Whatever choice we make, we always bring a result. To every action, which is a law, to every action, there is a reaction to that. God said, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So don't judge, or rather, don't put the blame of the situation of your life that is bad on God or on people who are envious, malicious, or which doctor, which craft, black magic, or this or that. No, nothing like that. What you sow, you reap. What I sow, I reap. Therefore, dear friends, for example, every day we are here speaking, teaching, instructing according to our faith, according to what God has given us, we are repassing this over to everyone, everyone who has ears to hear. So, you can notice that every, every, every single day, we have something new to pass on to you. Isn't it true? Very well. Why is it? It's because my thoughts are, I would say, 90 plus percent connected to what God said. I wouldn't say 100 percent because sometimes I take time to watch the news or to read something that is, is not within the context. But usually my life is connected to what God said to what God said, because what he said will come to pass. If it didn't come to pass today, it will come to pass tomorrow. There's no doubt. The thief steals and succeeds and prospers in that moment. But later on, he will be caught. Later on, sooner or later, he will lose. He will go to prison or I mean, an accident will happen to him. By chance, he will go through a situation and he will lose his life. I mean, there will always be problems to those who live in error because they are sowing what is bad. They will reap what is bad. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. There is no other way. No one can deliver us from what we sow. No one. No one. 
There's no mother, father, money. There's no success. There's nothing. Nothing that can impede a person from reaping what they sowed. And that's a given, a no-brainer. If they don't reap today, they will reap tomorrow or after tomorrow, and you can be certain that sooner or later they will reap it. And there's no other way. They won't die without reaping what they sowed. Because that's what is written. It's been determined. And this is a matter of faith, isn't it? It's a matter of faith. A thief to steal needs to have faith. He needs to believe that stealing is going to make him successful. But it will bring consequences or anything else. A politician, a bad politician, a corrupt politician, sooner or later he will be caught. Sooner or later he will fall. If he is corrupt, if he is a liar, if he is a deceiver, he can have a palace, he can have wealth hidden in a country considered a tax haven. But one day, sooner or later, they will reap what they sowed. There is no doubt about that. This is written. It's determined. We cannot even wish evil on them because for the corrupt politicians, it's certain, as certain as God exists, not only politicians, but everyone, all the sinners, it's written here, evil pursues sinners. That's why Jesus came into the world. He came to forgive, to wash, to forgive, to justify, to cleanse and purify sinners that accept Him and submit to His rules. So, when a person, a sinner, accepts the Lord Jesus as their Lord, their only Lord and Savior, and they live according, they live their life based upon His Word, then they are forgiven. God erases that evil that we practiced and He makes all things new, which is what also is guaranteed here. But to the righteous, Jesus makes us righteous. When we present faith in Him, He justifies us. It's not because we deserve, but because He paid the price for that. He paid the price with His own life in order to make us righteous, but to make home righteous, those who believe in Him sincerely. So, the righteous, it's written here, shall be repaid with good. They will be benefited with what is good. Just as evil pursues the evildoers, the sinners, good will also pursue those who do what is good. You see, that evil is a curse. Sin is a curse. It's a spirit. Sin is a spirit. And it pursues a person or their victims indeed. There is no other way. It's not possible for a person to be free from it. It's not possible because it's an unclean spirit. And this, dear friends, is what I have been basing my life upon. That's it. So I can speak about this to you because everyone knows me. Everyone basically knows me. So not everyone, but many people hate me, condemn me, and they say this and that about me and so on. They can say whatever they want. They can say but nothing will affect me, because what affects me is God's opinions. And God's opinion is written in His Word. And this gives me peace. It guarantees me peace. So, my conscience is at peace, because the Word of God, the Word itself, through the Holy Spirit, 
convinces me that I'm okay. And this has to happen to you as well. That's why the need of you receiving the Holy Spirit, it's not possible, it's not possible for you to be happy without receiving the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. You can be healed, you can be blessed, you can be benefited with wealth and conquer the whole world. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will be poor and miserable and unhappy. That's the reality. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is not an option to speak in tongues. No. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. It's the guarantee of God that we were accepted, that we were chosen, that we are indeed blessed. May God bless you all. I mean, this will depend only on you. You who have to go after it in order to fit in, you know, in the Word of God so that you can be in there, hidden in God's dwelling place, in the secret place of the Most High. And evil may come as much as it wants, but nothing will happen to you. Okay? May God bless you and ask you Actually, before I say see you tomorrow, I want to let you know that on Saturday, the 20th, the following Saturday, we are going to have following week, right? Yes, on the 20th of April, we shall have the love walk. The love walk, the walk of love. And the, in Brazil, there's a specific place where it will take place. Each state will have their own place that you can go to and do the walk and speak to your spouse and so on, your boyfriend, your fiancé and so on. And on the 21st, the Sunday of forgiveness, the Sunday of forgiveness, everyone, everyone that needs forgiveness should participate this Sunday because if there is no forgiveness, there is no peace. Do you want to be forgiven by God? Then you also need to forgive. If you are forgiven by God, you, you are at peace. But if you don't forgive, how can you have peace? Jesus said, If we forgive our debtors, we shall be forgiven. But if we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven either. The Sunday of Forgiveness, the 21st of April, be my guest in any universal church of the kingdom of God. May God bless you then, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.